Today, video cameras are everywhere. We bring you the pictures they've captured. Sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's funny, but it's always real TV. Here's an unusual problem caught on tape. The weather changed, and now this parasailer can't get down. A store security camera picks up the desperate sounds of the clerk. This is all that's left. Someone's been stealing the Christmas lights. And the least likely culprit is caught on tape red-handed. Capturing wild boar the hard way. And we found old tape of Oprah long before she became the queen of talk. Perhaps maybe this is your number. Whatever you do, don't blink. Real TV is on the air. I'm John Daly, back with more of life's most amazing moments caught on tape. We begin with a riddle. How do you get a parasail back down to the ground when the wind won't stop? Our John Johnston has the tape of the tug of war between man and nature. It's a beautiful day in British Columbia, Canada. And a home video camera captures the fun in the sun. People are swimming, picnicking, parasailing just hanging out, enjoying the day. But that's all about to change. A woman is out on the lake, parasailing. She's more than 150 feet in the air when the wind shifts and the weather turns bad. The wind picked up to the point where they couldn't bring her in. There was no, no slack on the line at all. It was very, very tight. The towboat that took the woman up now ties its rope onto a floating dock 600 feet offshore. You can see a few people on the tape that uh, were trying to climb the actual rope. But as they try to pull the parachute down, the strong wind pulls the dock toward the shore. As she got closer to shore, you could see she was heading for some high voltage power lines. High above, the terrified woman hangs on, a captive of the relentless wind and headed for high voltage. I couldn't imagine what was going through her mind. People on shore see the panic on her face and rush to help. And everybody was grabbing onto the line to try and bring this, this person down. They grab the line and begin pulling, but the wind is still stronger than they are. More and more people head into the lake to join in this man versus nature tug of war. Altogether, about 150, 200 people had started heading towards this floating dock and forming a, a daisy chain type thing grabbing onto the line. And as one person would grab it, the next person behind them would slowly lower into the water a bit so that you've got enough people and enough weight on the line to bring this person down. is safe. She's on the dock, then on the shore. Home video cameraman Rob Graham says the woman will probably never forget that afternoon, and neither will he. What I did notice is the way the whole beach came into play on this, and it was safety that brought everybody together to bring this person down safely without any injury or accident. A great team effort. An ambulance came, but the woman did not need treatment. She disappeared into the crowd. Well, the most compelling thing about our next tape is the sound. It's an armed robbery victim's blood-curdling scream. Here's why surveillance cameras have become standard equipment at most every convenience store. The clerk behind the counter has one of the most dangerous jobs in America. She's on the overnight shift, and you never know who might walk in. Just stay where you are. In this case, it's a young man who's wearing bright colors, but thinking dark thoughts. He places some gum on the counter, and the clerk rings up the sale. Then she makes idle conversation with her customer. Is it that cold? Yeah, I'm walking. I'm but he wants more than a stick of gum. He wants to stick up the store.
happened so fast. Let's take a second look. Another employee hears her frantic cry and jumps the robber. Then the bad guy pulls a knife on the stunned employee, who wisely makes a quick exit. Grab it. Hit the button. Hit the button. Police are called, but the robber gets away. Unfortunately, he took some cash, but thankfully, he didn't take a life. It took three months, but thanks to the tape, the suspect was arrested and charged with aggravated robbery. Well, in another store security tape, a thief cases the joint, picks out the loot, and makes his move. But if he thinks he's going to get away, he's wrong. Our Michael Brownlee has the tape. It's 8.49 p.m. An outside security camera at a Denver department store records a man parking his car at a side entrance. As he walks into the store, an interior camera picks up the action. A concerned security guard trains the camera to follow the man's every move. Noticing the suspicious shopper pick up several expensive jackets, the guard calls for backup and goes after the suspect, but not before the guy bolts for the door. The thief drops the loot and scrambles to get in his car, but the relentless security guards do their best to stop him from leaving. As he rams into a mall security truck, one guard manages to get a hand on the man, but just then he throws the car in reverse and knocks the guard over. The security truck swerves around to block him in, but again, the driver shifts gears and drives away. Justin Blackburn was the security guard monitoring the surveillance cameras that night. I noticed the vehicle pulling up and I thought that there would potentially be a problem. As he entered the store, he immediately went to the highest priced jackets that the store carried and picked up about eight of them at once. I began to notify mall security and also the police department as the subject was still inside the store moving around. Knowing that the shoplifter wasn't going to hang around for long, Justin left the monitoring room and ran after him. I tried to get to him before he got into the vehicle, but he was able to, to enter the vehicle and began to move the vehicle forward. He looked at me and we made eye contact very quickly. I was hollering at him to just give up. But the persistent man wouldn't give up, and at that moment, he threw the car in reverse. The door just kind of took me for a ride, spun me up and, up and down around a couple times, and uh, I ended up on the ground on my knees. But I remember just kind of shaking my head like, whoa. What was that all about? Luckily, Justin wasn't seriously hurt during the dangerous ordeal. And even though the shoplifter made his getaway, he was later arrested because along with the jackets he left in the parking lot, he also left behind one of his license plates. And confronted with the tape, the man pled guilty to felony theft. He awaits sentencing. Well, continuing the theme, a thief gets caught on this next tape too. The crime is unusual and the suspect is a surprise. It's a beautiful but dim Christmas for Bruce Hennings and his family. You see, his Christmas lights are mysteriously missing. This is all that's left of our string of lights. Over $150 worth of lights, gone. Someone or something is stealing the light bulbs, leaving the chewed strands behind. But who could it be? You can see where he has cut the end of these. Bruce grabs his home video camera in search of his Christmas Grinch. As he documents the scene of the crime, Bruce hears rustling in the trees. Could it be the culprit? You're not going to believe it. To his surprise, he sees the crook. There he goes. It's a squirrel who's stealing his Christmas. He's taking the bulbs off from the Christmas lights and storing them as nuts. The video doesn't lie, folks. This sneaky squirrel is chewing on the wire, and after unscrewing the bulb, he runs off, hiding it up in his tree like a nut. And off he goes. But finding the felon isn't enough for Bruce. He wants to catch the pesky critter. I have a trap for him. So he sets a trap using not nuts, not acorns, but Christmas lights. There he is. And I hope he goes for it. The nutty squirrel falls for the bait and ends up in the cage. Finally got the squirrel. He's right here. That's all in your hand, isn't it? 
Finally got the squirrel. I can't see him. And keeping with the Christmas spirit, Bruce sets him free, far, far away from the Christmas tree. Still ahead, <laughs> the wild boar <laughs> bites back. Plus, the mountain climber in a hairy situation. Later, that's one heck of a way to get a low airfare. And Oprah Winfrey like you've never seen her before. No scripts, no actors. But today, one very famous talk show host. Real TV returns in a moment. If it's real and it's on tape, it's on real TV. Once again, here's John Daly. Welcome back. A mountain climbing experience turns into an emergency for the woman on our next tape. She's stuck. A camera records the delicate rescue attempt. And Arsabila Vargas has the tape. These mountain climbers love living life on the edge. Here, daredevils from all over the country are testing their skills and nerve in Las Vegas. It's a five-day competition, all recorded on video, where these thrill-seekers compete in ten events. They play by the rules and cheat death at the same time. Now, along with firewalking, bungee jumping, and snowboarding, the contest also includes rock climbing, where participants scale down a very steep rock. And as you're about to see, one contestant will not only get the thrill of her life, but she'll also learn a great lesson in survival. Melissa, the mountain climber you see on the screen, makes her way down this steep cliff. Everything seems to be going smoothly. But then it becomes quite apparent that she's in trouble. My hair stuck. Your hair stuck? That's right. She just said her hair was stuck. What do you mean your hair is stuck? She got a hair While stuck. those on the ground frantically think of ways of getting stuck. her down, Ed Body, the event instructor, wraps a rope over his leg and arm and jumps over the edge of the rock. My greatest fear for her was that she would get more hair pulled into her device. But I don't like to see people hurt. I don't like to see people in pain. Within seconds, he makes his way to Melissa and delicately helps her untangle her hair. Right when I got about three feet above her, I stopped, secured my line, and leaned across and leaned into her. And yeah. uh, I went and uh, pulled her hair out of the device. Okay, lower! Then she just repelled to the ground. The mountain climber finally makes her way down. A little shaken, but considering herself quite lucky. After all, she still has a healthy head of hair, and it's all still attached. Okay? Yep. <laughs> you almost did cut it. <laughs> I know. I, I actually, I thought I, I did rip out some of it. But at least there's plenty of it. <laughs> Well, Melissa's a real trooper. She continued to climb for the rest of the day. Well, it seemed like a pretty straightforward assignment. Capture a wild boar that's been annoying the people in one Georgia community. But it's as if the animal knows he's being videotaped because he's not giving up without a fight. It's a journey up the Okanee River in Georgia for a wild boar that's been terrorizing this community. <laughs> Wayne and Carrie Collier are a father and son team that hunts boar for a living. Their job today is not to kill, but to capture and relocate this swine. Led by their dogs, the Colliers follow behind. The hunt is caught here on home video. It's not long before the dogs spot their target and attack. <laughs> Cornered, the boar can't break free from the onslaught. Wayne and Carrie have to step in and separate the animal. Wayne pins the hog and ties its feet together, but the boar is not willing to give up. The instant the animal feels Wayne release pressure, it snaps its neck back and bites him in the arm with its jagged tusks. Watch again in slow motion. Wayne is stunned, but continues his hog tying. 
Better get, get, get around here. Get, you to the river. Get, get him out. Yeah, I get him with it. Hey, yo. We gotta start dragging on him. The colliers carry the boar back to their boat. That dog got on the front of that boat, too. Mm. Carey gives his best effort at stitching up his father's wounded arm. I'm making about two stitches. Yeah, that's about an inch of gash, I think two or three. I wanted to put three, but he wouldn't let me. Fixed up and as good as new, Wayne and his son ride off. But with this tape as a reminder, neither one will soon forget the boar who almost got the best of them. And the boar, well, he was relocated to a less populated area. We'll be right back. Still ahead, they're just hanging out. And we've got the tape even Oprah forgot about. We're discussing battered husbands. We'll be right back. Well, many people can't fathom jumping out of an airplane. And then there are some people who like to hang onto the outside of a speeding plane for a few minutes before letting go. Six men desperately cling to the back of a cargo plane as it circles high above the Caribbean Sea. It's a 13,000-foot drop to the shark-infested waters below. And it takes every ounce of strength for this precious human cargo just to hold on. Uh-oh, they can't hang on any longer. Wait a minute, it looks like everybody wants off of this flight. These are professional skydivers. The five four-man multicolored teams free fall through space at 60 miles an hour to form a human kaleidoscope. inside the plane adds a different perspective of the skydiver's unique exit. And touchdown on the sunny beach of this Caribbean resort is as smooth as silk. Well, now for some classic real TV. It's the queen of daytime television, Oprah Winfrey. We're discussing battered husbands. Four years before Oprah Winfrey took daytime television by storm with her own show, she co-hosted a Baltimore, Maryland talk show called People Are Talking. I mean, did you feel like slapping her or what? I slapped her once. She spit in my face in one of these rages. Among other things, the show featured this segment called Dialing for Dollars. Dialing for Dollars jackpot, 750. Seven from the top, we're calling. Seven top, 750. Perhaps, maybe, this is your number. 750, seven from the top, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the top, $750. Last four digits are 6389. 6389, $750, seven from the top. And after the first ring and the second ring and the third ring, then we start counting down. And Oprah must be glad that she was able to dial up a different formula for success. Counting down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. A lot of success. And we'll be right back. It might not look like it, but these folks actually love watching TV. Real TV. Here's the deal. They're going to take these TVs, they're 12 to 20 inches in size, and they're going to uh, drop them down there on targets. Our affiliate, WLMT-TV UPN30 in Memphis, Tennessee, picked five winners to hurl their old TVs off a five-story building. In return, they won brand new 27-inch replacements. And in keeping with the real TV image, we have it from every possible angle. And that's it for now. There's more real TV next time. Until then, don't forget to take your camera with you. You never know when real TV might happen. Seven from the top.
top we're calling 7 top 750 perhaps maybe this is your numbers <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,